Hey guys, okay, so I did this palette wall mostly. My hubby helped a little bit behind me and just tons of um, comments on Facebook and people asking questions. So I thought I would do a vlog um, on how to do it. It's really kind of easy. You just need a couple of tools. It's not perfect um, by any means, but I love it. It turned out really good. Um, we're converting, this is my mom's uh, garage that we're converting. And we just got this wall in a week ago. And so to prepare it, there is tar paper. As you can see the studs at the top, uh, Skipper got a roll of tar paper, uh, stapled the tar paper over just in case there's any crack. Um, so you won't see, cause like here's, I'm gonna zoom in, you can see a crack sorry this lens is like really funky but this looks better with black so no like light or anything you know white shows through i've got the boards a bunch of them laid out we're gonna break down some more pallet wood so we'll show you how to do it these are this is my stash of the wood that has a lot of character um, you don't want to stain every single board you'll notice uh, there's lots of different colors i use four colors of stain uh, black is one of them the whiteboards actually came like that. I didn't touch those. Um, and there's a couple of them, you know, like this one, it, it just has a lot of character. So I didn't want to like touch, you know, mess with that. But anyway, here are my boards that I don't want to stain. Um, I like the reds over here, uh, browns. This is a little bit of the white uh, cause we're doing this wall next. Um, anyway, so here are the stains. I've got four colors and these are the stains I used in the last batch for the other wall. I just picked out colors that I liked and I wanted a reddish one, a brown, a light brown and a black just to have variety. So anyway, that's what I chose and I got them laid out so we can, um, and this isn't all of them. I think this wall took about 200 boards if I remember correctly. And um, this wall, we've got a breakdown. We got some pallets outside ready to break down. Um, so anyway, we're gonna finish breaking down those today. We'll show you how I did them. You do have to have help when you're breaking down pallets. Um, I tried it one time by myself and I wanted to punch myself in the face. It was horrible. I just had like a little crowbar, a little crowbar tool and guys don't laugh at me if you're watching this because I don't know the technical name for the tools so a lot of times I make up my own names yeah I make up names of tools but anywho so I had like this crowbar thing and a hammer and it took me like 30 minutes to get one board off I was like this is not working so we have a, a whatever you call this doohickey thing right here saw um, Skipper can tell you what it is. I can't remember. So that's what we're using in a couple of hammers. Okay, so my husband just reminded me, I didn't mention this. The, the widths of the boards are all different. And the key is every row has to be the same width all the way down. If not, you have big gaps like that. So the key is, and you might even, when you're breaking down your boards, you might not even want to take them if they're not going to fit. Anyway, just measure them, make sure they're the same width. And a lot of times when I'm fixing to put the, the wall together, I'll line up the boards, like all the ones that are the same size. And then you, it's like a puzzle though. You don't want to put um, the same colors next to each other. And I really, I would lay down a whole row on the floor and kind of imagine what it looked like up on the wall. So, all right. So here is a pallet and um, Skipper has a method and I have a method. So what I do is I'll take a hammer and I'll stick one claw up under there and I'll, I just get the board raised just a little bit and I'll do that all the way down. Then I'll take a sawzall and you gotta get the right kind of blade. Um, you gotta get a blade that'll cut through steel or cut through uh, nails. Nails, And obviously this one's been used quite a bit. The, all the paint's completely gone off of it. And you just, and you gotta cut these nails and you gotta have somebody to help you too. But you can see how fast it'll cut through them.
and it, it doesn't take long. Usually I'm holding against where he's pushing just to help you get an idea what's going on. Right. So it gives your wall more character because your nail heads are still in your board when you cut them mm -hmm. instead of trying to remove them. So that's what we've preferred to do. And it's actually pretty fast when you do it. And I'll show you um, kind of how I do it with the hammer so you get an idea. And when I do it, I don't use a hammer at all. I just take this Sawzall thingy. So I'm just getting it to raise up enough to get the blade up under it. And I go all the way down. And now I can just get my blade up under there. And I'm holding it right now with my legs. us like six minutes well seven six yeah to break down a pallet not bad we are curious how long it was taking us but um, one thing I wanted to mention is when you when you're lining it up see how this plate right here will go flat oops sorry go flat with to the wood you want to lay it on here and if you get digging in the wood it's gonna get really shaky and it's really hard so you can always let off the gas and back up if you get, and back out if it gets shaky like that. We're almost done breaking down. I've got them kind of sectioned off how I'm gonna stain them. Just so you kind of know um, how much, how many boards you're gonna need, you take the width times your height and feet and multiply them together and it's roughly one board per square foot is what you're gonna need. So that's how you figure it out, or that's how we did. Okay, proud mom moment. Okay, my boy's gonna do one. I'm going to go ahead and stir the stain and um, I usually start with the lightest color because um, I'll use the same brush and I'll just go darker and darker every time I switch a color. So this paintbrush is um, it's the dual purpose one. You can use it for stain or for paint. Um, it's going to soak up a lot in the beginning. Anyway, I don't do the sides um, because you don't really see the sides. You don't really, um, it'd be kind of a waste. But anyway, don't be afraid to like put it on thicker, which I need to do because you're just going to wipe it off and then I'll leave it overnight to dry. And then I'll come back and build the wall later. I'm not sure when because we're going to borrow a nail gun. So I'll just stop here just to show you. So after you put it on pretty generously, um, I, I want to get those spots like that though, because those will stick out like sore thumb. Anyway, get a towel that you really don't like, a rag, and you're going to wipe it. Ooh. So just like that. All right, we're going to time lapse. say before I start that I am not a professional and I have only done the wall behind me that you see so um, you know I'm just posting from experience of my one little wall and I had help from my <laughs> husband I wanted to also say 
Um, it's a good idea to wear gloves, and I don't have any, I didn't have any on yesterday when we were breaking down pallets, and I have like seven splinters, and like five are still in my hand. But I didn't get any splinters on that wall. I don't know what the deal is. But anyway, so here we go. We're gonna start putting up a, a pallet wall. So what I was gonna show you is how I lay it out for, you know, and pick and choose the colors. I just lay out six pieces because, you know, that's the, about the width of my wall. I'll probably have to cut the end of one of them off. But I kind of choose different colors because I don't, want the same color side by side um so anyway this is how i do it and i'm going to start at the top of this wall that wall we started at the bottom but this wall i'm starting at the top because we got the door we gotta go around yeah so we got to get to the top of the door frame evenly and so we felt like it'd be easier to start at the top so all right, here we go. A woman with a nail gun. So I'm putting the, the not the straightest side at the top because you can't really see the gaps. But you got to shoot on the studs. And oh my gosh. So um, you can do chalk lines and pop it where you can know where your studs are, which we did it on that wall. But I'm just kind of looking at my staples so I know where my studs are. I do like two um, where each stud is on each board. I just was gonna show you, um, I've kind of found an easier way to measure them. I'll just kind of stack them with my, I can't hold this thing, with my fingers and I kind of feel them. And if they're, they if they feel the same on both sides, like I'll put my hands on both sides like that. And uh, that's how I've been measuring, then I lay them out. And I try to get colors different, like, um, 
you don't want your cut lines to be like all up in a row either. You want to kind of scatter those and you want to scatter the colors. So, you know, I'll do, you know, black and then, you know, you'll just try to, it's kind of like piecing a puzzle. And I'll literally, you probably noticed in the fast mode that I literally was just stepping back and looking to see what color I want to do. And sometimes I'll hold them up and see what looks good. Like I'll say, you know, I'll hold this up once I decide how big the next row is. And you know, if I'm like, no, I want a darker color, I'll just play with it like that and see what, you know, looks what I like. And I got lucky above the door, um, finding a skinny row, I only had one of the skinny row, like enough for one row. Um, so I was like, that's favor. Anyway, Skipper's doing good on the floor. It's getting there. This is how you load this little nail gun. Um, make sure the heads are to your right. And wait, hold on. The, they gotta be pointing in the same direction as your thing. It slides in the center hole, like in the bottom, like towards the, towards your hand side. And then you, you pull this thingy down. And then I'm pulling on this side with this finger. Of course it doesn't work. There it goes. And then it's loaded. Ready to go. quite enough wood um, and I've got a little dip here so I got a skinnier board I'm gonna put just a tiny little gap there but to kind of realign it but I'm gonna show you how to use the miter saw um, so I'm gonna measure my gap here and it's like 19 and a half so you come out here get your piece of wood and, okay, measure 19 and a half. And then when you use this gadget, um, be careful of your fingers, make sure you have safety goggles on. Okay, now I have safety goggles on. Okay, that was really close. All right, so you measure your, make sure you're at your line by coming down and uh, seeing if you're lined up. There's a trigger on up here, and this is where I'm. Oops, I should have stuck my hand in there. All right. I always put my cutoff in towards the edge, and then the other end where you can see it. Because I think he's trimming around here. I'm not sure. So, anyway. And feel for your stud. It's over here. And if there's nothing for this to hold on to, you can go at an angle and connect them. So now they're tight. Ta-da! Okay, this board's really crooked and I didn't realize that and then I put it on the wall so I literally just put two in and I realized it was crooked so I just pulled it off and there's handy dandy little 
a snipper tool. What's it called, babe? Snips. Snips. And all you do is, is squeeze. Make sure you put the nail in the very top of the snips. It's a lot easier than if you put it at the bottom. What are you talking about? If you put... Like if, it is me doing it, by the way. If you put the nail out in the tip of it, like out here, it's real hard to get it to cut, but if you put it in the oh, very at the base, at the very base of it, it's easy. Gotcha. Anyway, because this board's crooked, I'll probably. Um, I'd cut it in half. Yeah, you can still use it. You just gotta cut it in half. Yeah. Which I'm not gonna do that. So we're getting down to the nitty gritty, and you know sometimes I'll flip the board. Like this one came like this. I didn't paint this one at all, but I want a little light color. Um, so we're getting, so I'm looking for the stud. So there's no, if there's only one stud that it's on, I shoot it at least three times and I try to, what do you call it? Toenail it? Toenail it. Like that. And then, um, this one's not going to fit, so we're going to have to cut this we're um cheating now because it's really it's getting later in the day because we're also putting down the floor and we put a map up so yeah palette wall is all finished yay so we're all done here is the finished um product let me back up so you can see we already started moving our stuff into, this is an office, so sorry, I already put some furniture in here, but you can see um, there's a lot of imperfections, but that's what I think makes it so cool. And for the baseboard, um, we just used a one by three, and it was really cheap at Lowe's, it, at Lowe's and it was like less than $2. A, eight foot, eight for foot eight foot piece so anyway um i've started decorating a little bit i got crosses i love crosses but um anyway if you have any questions comment below and me and me or my hubby will um try to answer the best as we can but i hope this helps somebody or encourage somebody um that you can do it it was fun. This wall to me was a little bit harder than that wall. <laughs> I don't know why this wall just went up super easy to me, but just be careful if it starts, your board starts to get curvy, uh, back up and fix it before you go on because it's hard to recover. I mean, you can add little gaps here and there, but it's just hard. But anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helped. Peace out. Bye.